three best high dividend yielding ETFs that not only offer a nice high starting dividend yield for massive passive income pretty much from day one, but on top of that are also safe in the context of dividend safety and overall underlying holdings and strategy. Now in this video, we are going to dig into three different high yielding dividend ETFs and explain how each of these ETFs could in theory allow an everyday investor to reach retirement, possibly even early, with enormous amounts of cash flow. Now, if this interests you at all, make sure to please stick around, drop a like down below, and let's get right into it. Before we get into today's video, make sure to please hit the first link in my description to support my brand new Patreon, to access things like my 31 page A to Z dividend investing ebook, access to my brand new custom dividend tracker to track all of your ongoing progress, to view my seven figure dividend portfolio, and so much more. I can't wait to see all of you guys inside. So the first high yielding dividend ETF that I'm a huge fan of and that I personally own thousands of shares of as a film in this video is Amplify ETFs, ticker symbol DIVO or DIVO. Now looking a little bit deeper into DIVO, it says why invest into DIVO? Income potential comprised of high quality dividend oriented stocks along with cover calls on individual stocks. So DIVO does not only have a high quality basket of stocks, which take my word for it and we are going to see in a second here exactly which stocks are within this ETF, but DIVO on top that also utilizes a cover call strategy on individual stocks which really juices up the income and also on top of that Devo pays out dividends on a monthly basis. It also says active management allows the portfolio manager or CWP to identify opportunities and risks and act on those decisions in real time. And lastly, seeks to lower volatility, dividend and option income may provide lower share price volatility versus the overall market during times of broad based market declines. And since I've owned Devo over the last few years, I've definitely seen this to be the case. Devo has not necessarily made me all that much money as far as growth and off my thousand shares of Devo. I haven't necessarily yet made a ton of money off of the growth of it, but, but the income has been very, very consistent and the volatility has been relatively low. And just like I promised, Devo does offer a pretty decent decently high starting dividend yield. As of right now, where Devo is trading, we're looking at around a 5% starting dividend yield. And although you might not necessarily think that that's super, super high, when I show you here in a second, the top holdings that Devo has, the 5% yield is going to feel actually pretty massive. Considering some of the top holdings are stocks like United Health Group, which is super high quality, tons of dividend growth names in here. Then we have a huge amount of Microsoft, Procter Gamble, Visa, Apple, Chevron, McDonald's, JP Morgan, and Goldman Sachs. Now, all in all, Devo only has around 30, 40 different holdings within the ETF at any given time, something around there. But the portfolio is still pretty well diversified. And like I said a second ago, some of these names within this ETF are some of the highest quality dividend growth names across the entire market, in my opinion. Names like Microsoft and Visa, just to name a few. Now looking a little bit deeper into Devo's dividends, D Devo does pay a dividend on a monthly frequency, like I said earlier, and it's somewhere around 14 or 15 cents most of the time. And looking at Devo's performance on the max time frame since around 2016, the ETF is up around 36.9% without including dividends. And although there definitely are ETFs out there that have more growth potential, for investors out there that are income focused and want to hold a high quality basket of holdings along with a great strategy, I'm talking about the cover call strategy, Devo is definitely an ETF to look into. The next super high quality, high yielding, dividend paying ETF that is definitely going to allow you to cash flow from day one is none other than JP Morgan NASDAQ Equity Premium Income ETF or JEPQ. Now on the JP Morgan website, it says JEPQ is designed to provide current income while maintaining prospects for capital appreciation. It then says generates income through a combination of selling options and investing in US large cap growth stocks seeking to deliver a monthly income stream from associated option premiums and stock dividends. So JEPQ buys into a basket of stocks that do pay dividends, but most of the income is going to come through the premiums from selling options. Now, as of right now, it looks like JEPQ has around 89 different holdings within the portfolio and to name off some of the top holdings, we're talking about names like Microsoft being around eight or 9% of the portfolio, Apple around eight or 9% of the portfolio. Then we have things like Google around 5% of the portfolio, Amazon, Nvidia, Meta, there's some super high quality names within this ETF. And not to mention these are definitely names that can offer some massive potential growth on top of the dividend. And speaking of growth, JEPQ is actually up 14.31% just year to date, which once again just shows that the basket of holdings that JEPQ buys into, this ETF definitely has the potential to move. But JEPQ investors like myself, and side note, I think as of right now, I have around four or 500 shares of JEPQ across my portfolios. A lot of us are not even all that concerned about growth. We're buying into JEPQ because of the nice juicy dividend. And speaking of, the dividend's trailing 12 month yield as of right now is around 12% which is absolutely massive. Not to mention that JEPQ does pay a monthly dividend as well, 
And since this ETF's inception has paid anywhere from around 36 cents all the way up to 70 cents, which is actually crazy. But over the last year or so, since I've been buying some shares of JEPQ, I'm definitely up on my position, which is awesome. But again, I'm getting paid a massive dividend on a monthly basis from holding on to my three, four, 500 shares. Now, the last and final high yielding dividend ETF that I've been buying a lot more as of recently is SVOL or the Simplified Volatility Premium ETF. Now, this ETF has a pretty interesting strategy. I'm sure you guys have probably heard about it, but the strategy says it seeks to provide investment results before fees and expenses that correspond to approximately one fifth to three tenths, the inverse of the performance of the CBOE volatility index or the VIX short-term futures while also seeking to mitigate extreme volatility. Now SVOL or Simplified Volatility Premium ETF is definitely what I would personally consider sort of an alternative investment and for me personally my risk tolerance and just my overall investment strategy I would never have SVOL as a massive portion of my overall portfolio but that being said it still is an ETF that I've been watching pretty closely over the last few months and I just recently started buying some more shares here and there once again a relatively small position but you're going to see here in a second on why it's so interesting. But before we go into that, looking at the performance of SVOL, as far as ETF price, we're talking 1.65% year-to-date gain, which isn't really all that horrible considering a lot of these other super high-yielding ETFs normally have a lot of decay, which on the max time frame, SVOL does have a little bit of decay. Since around 2021, this ETF is down around 13.84%, but that's not including dividends. And speaking of dividends, SVOL has a trillion 12 month dividend yield of around 17.25%, which is partially, I'm not going to lie, what got my attention right off the bat. But to be fair, there's lots of ETFs or even stocks out there that might have a massive dividend yield of say north of 10%, but a lot of times it doesn't really stick. A lot of times they can't really sustain that high of a dividend yield for all that long, but SVOL does pay out a dividend on a monthly basis. And as you can see, since the ETF's inception, we're talking anywhere from 26 cents on a monthly basis. And as of recently, pretty steady at around 30 or 32 cents, which is not bad at all. Now, one of the biggest red flags for an ETF that does have, say, a north of 10 or 15 percent dividend yield, like SVOL 17%, there are a lot of times a huge risk of massive, massive ETF price decay, which in theory means that the dividend being paid out on a monthly basis can hopefully make up for the decay, but at that point, it's sort of a zero-sum game. But with SVOL's performance so far, I mean, year-to-date, this ETF is actually up in the green 1.65% and has been paying me over the past few months that I've been holding onto it anywhere from 30 to 32 cents per share that I own, which is generating some massive, massive yield and income for my portfolio. But I say all that just to be completely transparent that something like the SVOL or even something like the yield max ETFs, a lot of these super high yielding ones are always going to be sort of a satellite position on my long-term portfolio. And of course, there are investors out there that do like to make these type of names a big, big portion of their portfolio and all power to them, best of luck to them. But for me personally, SVOL is still on the little bit more of the risky side of things. But as far as an ETF that pays a dividend on a monthly basis and offers a bowl of cash flow, or at least has historically, SVOL or the Simplified Volatility Premium ETF is definitely worth looking into. So there we have it. Those are three different income generating dividend ETFs that are offering anywhere from 5, 12, up to 17% dividend yield instantly day one for dividend growth focused investors that are looking to get some cash in their pockets. Now, out of all three of these different ETFs we went through, whether it's Devo, JEPQ, or SVOL, I want to hear from you guys down below. If you could only buy into one of these ETFs for the rest of your life, for whatever reason, which one would you choose and why? Comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like on it and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by. And if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.